to another edition of Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. I'm Tom Burton, Superintendent of Princeton. And before I introduce you to our incredible student panel featuring three unbelievable student athletes, let me give a special shout out to the guys behind the camera and doing the video editing. So certainly appreciate Dwayne, John, Cameron, and Elijah. And in upcoming episodes, you're going to meet them. So gentlemen, thank you so much for the work. And we're really proud to partner with ICRC and the great work that's being done, giving students opportunities to be empowered. So let's get right to it. Here today with us, Justin, Brooklyn, and Maria. So let's meet them. Justin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I play varsity soccer, and I played for four years straight, and I'm number one goal scorer for the GMC. I also like, I work at Monarcas. I also like to go play around different sports. I play many other sports, but I only play soccer. So, so Justin, um, last year, word on the street, actually I know it's true, yeah. is that you were first team GMC. Talk a little bit about what that means from the team perspective. When you have, when you're first team, but it's team sport, okay. right? So talk a little bit about that, how your teammates have kind of uh, lifted you up. Um, they really helped me throughout the whole season. They taught me what was a family and they really brought me up, even though it wasn't a great season of goal scoring, but they brought me in together and we played really well all together. You guys had a playoff win. Yeah. Which is great. You remember the conversation we had in the classroom? Yeah, I remember. Right? That. And you pretty much promised me that you <laughs> were going to beat Edgewood. So, yeah, we did. So he won two to one, mm -hmm. right? So talk a little bit about that game and kind of what made that, why did we win the game? What pushed us over? We came in with the mentality that we're going to win. And uh, we fought our, our hearts out throughout the whole game. I managed to score two goals, but the whole team really worked. They really worked hard throughout the whole game. We didn't let, we didn't conceive any goals, and we just defended with our lives. That was great. So thanks for that W, because I was able to see. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I know we, we weren't able to win the next round, but hard fought game, uh, yeah. took an early lead, and, and played well as a team. Yeah. Yeah. Brooklyn, thanks, thanks so much for coming today. Yeah. Um, you're really busy, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I play Princeton for, I mean, I play tennis for Princeton, and I'm for singles. Um, on the team and I've been playing tennis since I was five years old and um, I played a couple sports like I played basketball and uh, ran track um, when I was really young but then I started focusing on tennis more when I got to uh, good, college school. Good decision. I mean uh, very very talented. I heard that one time you had the opportunity to play against the associate superintendent <laughs> level five rated tennis player and the superintendent probably a minus five rated tennis player in the doubles match. Yeah, I did. Yeah, and you guys whooped us pretty good. So on top, I know that's not the biggest win you had this year, but talk a little bit about the biggest win you had this year and how your teammates pick you up when they're watching you play what would, some would say would be a singular sport. Um, I, I would say my biggest win would probably be against um, like Oak Hills. And um, yeah, we went to a um, third set. Mm. Um, like, oh, we went to a, uh, we went to a second set. Sure. And um, it, yeah, it was tough on that set. And uh, teammates team, cheering, yeah. Yeah, definitely, especially um, Ashley Thomas. Oh, very good. Sure. Another um, talented tennis yeah, player. Yeah, she makes sure all the team is staying positive during the game. Oh, that's yeah. great. Maria, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I've been at Princeton since seventh grade. When I got to high school, I decided to just stick with running. I used to play every single sport, and especially select soccer. But when I went to high school, I just focused on running. So I've been doing cross country, indoor track, and outdoor track every single year. Besides junior year, I swam instead of doing indoor track because I had an injury. And yeah, I've just been loving Princeton, and yeah. But tell us a little bit about this meet thing you have going on this weekend. Yeah, I have the state cross country meet this weekend in Hebron, Ohio at the National Trail Raceway. And you qualified last week and finished seventh? Yeah, I finished seventh against a really competitive field. Um, Ohio this year for cross country is ranked number four out of all the states in the United States. So Ohio is really competitive. So just to qualify for the state meet is really important. Well, listen, I am beyond excited to talk to you guys today. Um, I know that from a multitude of levels, you guys have done a lot and you really feel empowered at Princeton. 
So let's kind of go deep. You know what our mission statement is, I, and I love the fact that kids actually know that, empowering each student for college, career, and life success. So Justin, talk a little bit about how you feel empowered at Princeton. Well, Princeton really brings out a lot of opportunities and different pathways for all of us, for different things you want to study. They have a lot of classes for different specific things. And if we don't want to, we want to focus on different stuff, they, they also support us in everything we do. Yeah, and so I know when we were talking earlier, Brooklyn, you kind of went a little bit deeper and talked, gave some specific examples, but Justin, you're 100% right. In the last episode, I talked about our business partnership program, which was, you know, it's just continued to blow up. We have 412 business partners now. We've placed about 80 total students out in the world of work, whether it's job shadowing, apprenticeships, internships, and we have more on the way, which we'll probably talk to you guys about here uh, after cross country tennis and soccer. So Brooklyn, uh, how do you feel empowered at Princeton? Um, I like how Princeton offers a lot of opportunities, like classes wise. So like they are, offer AP classes, IB, um, CCP classes that um, a lot of students really take advantage of. And, they, and the teachers also help you to succeed through the class. Yeah, so you feel pushed yeah. to do your best mm -hmm. and held accountable. Yeah. So like if you don't do your work, you got a problem, yeah, right? Or you have a problem. Um, so just for all those people out there, when we say AP, mm -hmm. they may not know what that means. So that's advanced placement. CCP is college credit plus. I don't even know if you guys know this or not, but last year alone, we had our students earned over 770 college credit plus hours. 777 hours of college credit. So that's tremendous. And IB, of course, is international baccalaureate. Maria, how do you feel empowered? I feel empowered by Princeton by all the opportunities I've received by going here. I was a part of the YBC research class last year. YBC? Youth Built Change. It was a research class where we tried to find a solution to Ohio's opioid crisis. Um, so that was really nice, getting to work with others, learn about myself, learn about our community. I've also gone to leadership summits, like women in sports, women in STEM, and just so many others I can't even think of right now. Um, but all the opportunities I've been given, if I was at any other school, I don't think I would have those opportunities. Yeah, so through UC and the National Institute of Health, University of Cincinnati and the National Institute of Health, that's the program you were talking about. Mm -hmm. So you talk a little bit about what you did at the end of the year how they held you responsible for the work that you did. So what did you do down at University of Cincinnati? We basically had to put together these poster boards with all of our findings, all the research we conducted. My group, we tried to find the solution to why people relapse and how to keep them from relapsing so they, they can successfully be reconnected back into society as a, a productive and loving member of society and be back with their families. Um, so we did a lot of research. We interviewed chemical dependency counselors and doctors. And so all the findings that we got, we put onto a po poster board. And we had a lot of people from all around the community come. You were there as well. Um, so we could just show them all the work that we've done. So multiple presentations. You had professors, deans. You had business leaders that were there. So that was a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I specifically loved about the program it was much bigger than just Princeton. And that's sometimes what happens is when you look at schools, sometimes schools just focus just on their own community, but we really should be concerned more globally, right? So speaking about global, Brooklyn, this summer, crazy opportunity you had, right? So word on the street is that you were in Flushing, New York. You wanna talk about that experience? Yeah, I was in um, Flushing, New York for the US Open. Uh, qualifier rounds and I was a um, ball kit for um, some top players that were um, trying to qualify to get into the main draw of the U.S. Open. Now that just a, that doesn't just happen. No. So how did you get chosen? Uh, I got chosen by the um, the the <laughs> the Mason um, tournament we have here in um, Ohio. Uh, it was it's the Western and Southern Open and I um, worked there as a ball kit. I've been there for five years. And, and so the work that you did there, they kind of evaluated that, and yeah. they're like, she's great. <laughs> yeah, they also chose me and another um, uh, boy ball kit to go there, too. 
That's that's incredible. What was your biggest takeaway there? Thousands of people watching. Were you nervous initially? Um, I just kind of just stuck to what I basically do in the, at the Western and Southern because I actually I feel like I did more tournaments in the West. I mean, more people in the Western and Southern than I did in New York. Which is held in Mason every yeah. year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, so yeah, I just kind of just stayed calm and I wasn't. I just focused on trying not to mess it, mess up. Okay. But, yeah. Very good. So now I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to start right now. You guys ready? Take a little bit of a risk. Okay. All right. So I'm going to leave you. I want you to leave us with this segment with one word that you feel kind of describes either your experience at Princeton or who you are as a student. So either or. And I'm going to give you some thought time while we go to this great video and, and really excited to announce just some of the, again, we look at all these opportunities. We're going to go to this video of two at Viking Diff programs that we've done. And so for those who don't know, we try to do an at Viking Diff. It's about a two minute segment where I interview students, whether it's in the school, athletic field, at concerts, or these two that you're going to see right now from two tremendous, tremendous students that I interviewed at the Blink Parade. So let's go there and we'll be right back. So I'm here with 11th grader Amari Mathis, getting ready for the Blink Parade. Amari, what do you think about the Blink Parade? The last time I did, I did this freshman year, it was so fun. We were getting so hyped, but it was tiring after. It's just, you just gotta have fun out there. It's just like another parade. Just get excited, you know what I'm saying? So Amari, I know you're a great student as well. What do you think about Princeton? Princeton, this, this is a great school. I'm everything we need to be, become what we want to be in life. Amari, how do you feel empowered at Princeton? The teachers, they want to help you. They want to help you succeed. Like my uh, AP US history teacher, she gives me tips on what I need to do to finish studying and everything. everything so, I need. AP classes, football, band, how do you balance everything? Uh, it's just like, take everything one step at a time. Like, as soon as you come to football practice, take your time, relax, that's like 30 minutes, and then start on your homework, and then just, Practice after you're done with your homework. You gotta be balanced, gotta be, you gotta practice. Princeton empowers you. So thanks. What do you think about this band warming up? Oh my god, they so lit, like, oh my god. There's this one song, a quad player, he has a solo, you gotta hear it. It's pretty amazing. Alright, signing off for Head Back and Dip. I'm with Amari, and we're out. This is Tom Burton, superintendent of Princeton City Schools. I'm here today for another edition of At Viking Diff. I'm with Jessica, our 12th grader at Princeton. We're at the Blink Parade. Jessica, what do you think about this? It's amazing. So Jessica, uh, you do so much stuff at Princeton. What do you think about Princeton? And when did you come to Princeton? Um, I absolutely love Princeton. I've been at Princeton ever since kindergarten. Um, Princeton is like home to me. Uh, the other day, I accidentally told my mom that I had driven back home. Um, I accidentally called it home uh, just because it's, it's, it's home to me. Princeton's like a family, isn't it? it is. Wouldn't you say? It, it, yes. I, I know there's so many activities. So outside of band and mm -hmm. doing great academically, what else do you do? Um, I was a part of the uh, first ever lacrosse team at Princeton um, last year. And this year I have the great privilege to be uh, the women's lacrosse team uh, head captain. Uh, I also... I, I am bilingual, so I translate for a lot of the PSYOP classes, um, and I uh, also do the morning announcements, I translate. Um, I absolutely love everything about Princeton. All right. Thanks, Jessica. Thank you for joining us for another edition of At Viking Diff, and as I always say, Go Vikes! Welcome back to Viking Voices. People of Princeton, we have three of them, just as a reminder, and we're going to get right back to it. So Maria, before we saw those great videos of the Blink Parade and the great opportunity we had to represent Princeton and the beautiful opportunity there to walk 0.8 miles, but it certainly seemed like it was much more than that. I don't know, I, you guys are busy with soccer and, and of course cross country and tennis, but walking down, there are so many people, it's overwhelmingly, no matter where we went, what path people were screaming, Princeton! It was tremendous. So a lot of alums were there, 
People were very proud. We had great music under the leadership of Kyle Phillips. It was amazing. So I asked you guys a question right before we left. One word to describe Princeton to you or you as a student. So Maria, what word? I have one for both of them. Okay. For me as a student, I'm a Viking. That's what I am and that's what I do. When I cross the finish line, first place at a race, I'm not thinking about I just won for myself, I just won for my team, and I just won for my school. So I would describe myself as a Viking. And for Princeton, I would say unity. We have so many different kind of people at our school, but we all work well together and we all get along and we all love each other and we all learn so much from each other so that we can be successful. And uh, what happens every once in a while after a race? After my races, especially when I finished first, that's really nice. You get on the podium, you're at the top, and I got to represent my school, so I make sure I have on my Viking hat, my Viking warm-ups, and I throw up the hashtag Viking Div for all the photo ops. Oh, very good. Thank you. Brooklyn, actually, you know what? Justin, what word? Family. And, and why? Talk a little bit about that. Well, as a school, we all work as a family and a brotherhood. We all care for each other. We all look out for each other. Everything we do, we all do it together. And even when we win, we all, we all, it's not just one person wins, even if one person scores, we all celebrate together and we are like a family. That's wonderful. So you talked about brotherhood. And I know Brooklyn, you could say whatever you want, but I want you to think about kind of the sisterhood too, right? Mm -hmm. So for Justin's perspective, he's looking at like the brotherhood. So what one word, and then talk a little bit about how you may feel are that kind of sisterhood, the unity, and so forth? But what one word? Um, I would say support. Okay. I feel like um, my team supports me when, because I'm usually the one that is like fi always finishing last. So they make sure they cheer me on during the match. And um, yeah. And then what, what about, so do, do you feel like, obviously you talked a little bit about the, the kind of sisterhood of tennis, yeah. of girls tennis and people cheering you on. Do you want to add anything to that? Well, tennis is, is such an individual sport. So when my, when my teammate, I just, when I see my teammates sitting on the benches, like cheering for me and making sure like, and even when, and when I miss a shot, they, they like react the same way I will react. So. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. And, and obviously in tennis, for those people that don't know, in tennis, in every single match, there are three single, there's a first single, second single, and third single, and there's two doubles, the first doubles and second doubles. And you know, scoring goes, they take a look at who won and who lost. So to win a tennis match overall, you have to have three wins. And it could come in a combination of any, correct? Okay. Well, I certainly appreciate you guys being here. You've done a great job. Set the bar really high for the next people that are going to sit in these same chairs. So Justin, Brooklyn, Maria, thank you so much. And you know how I always say, go Vikes. Early in the program, we heard from three tremendous students uh, talk about individual pathways, opportunities, the sense of pride, family, support, and being a Viking. You know, at Princeton, we try to provide as many opportunities as we possibly can. Most recently, we had the opportunity in our art department to be, take part in a county-wide, tri-county-wide uh, competition. There are 30 districts that were given the opportunity to construct a billboard using their greatest artistic ability about teen health and teen safety. They announced three winners, and they actually took the opportunity to announce three winners at Princeton. First, second, and third place. November 11th is a day that we take pause and we celebrate and recognize the great contributions of veterans across the country. Some that gave their life, some that served, the selfless, selfless acts over and over again that have been given by those who chose to go to the military. We have a tremendous program and wanted to highlight, we're gonna take a look at some pictures and perhaps some videos here, just a couple minutes to give you a little snapshot of how at Princeton, we recognize those veterans who so selflessly served our country.
so I bared down, I studied hard. Again, perseverance, teamwork, you know, accountability, right? You're accountable now, not only to yourself, but to people around you because everybody wants to help. But you're also accountable to your parents because they don't have the money anymore to pay for college. So you got, you've gone a long way, and so you can't get, come out. But those things all came together, and I, mean, I, I worked hard. I used to watch a lot of my buddies go out. You know, you only had one night a week to go out, one or two nights a week to go out and enjoy it, unlike uh, anybody else who went to college where they had every, week, every night, we only got one or two nights. And I lost a lot of them because I was studying to become a mechanical engineer. <clears throat> and so I got my mechanical engineering degree, and how does it pay off? Uh, my first assignment in the Navy was on, uh, was on a ship in San Diego, and I was, in engineering, I was in the engineering department as a young division officer, and I said, man, all that stuff that I learned at the academy when I was like, oh, man, this stuff is not going, well, who's going to apply this? Where am I going to apply this at? I had no idea, and it was all in front of me as a mechanical engineer major, and it helped me, and it accelerated, helped me accelerate my career, and that ground me into being a surface warfare officer, which I am today, uh, and I'm a proud surface warfare officer. I've been on numerous ships, and I've uh, been a department head where I was a chief engineer on a, a frigate. I was a chief engineer on a uh, cruiser. I was also a, a chief engineer, I'm sorry, I also commanded a minesweeper down in Texas for a couple years. I commanded a destroyer in Japan for a couple years. Uh, and then I had the opportunity to be a Commodore, which meant I commanded a destroyer squadron of about six to eight ships, uh, destroyers, for a couple years as well, excuse me. Uh, in the meantime, like I said, I uh, pointed out, uh, you know, we say it usually comes with your sea bag. I was able to get a family in the meantime. Uh, married my wife in San Diego, and I uh, had my two kids out there, and, uh, you know, and it's just fast pace. And, it, and in that fast pace, you really begin to understand what it's all about when you look at your family on a pier. Uh, or, you know, I could translate that to other service members who, you know, whether you look at your family you leave behind on the, life, on the flight line in the Air Force or behind when you go on your deployment in the Army and Marine Corps, uh, et cetera. So uh, that, that's, uh, my, that's my story in a, uh, in a nutshell. Although, but like I said, I always harken back to Princeton High School and the things that I learned in this area from my parents and this school district. And even now, or I shouldn't say now, but even... When I was a Commodore, we used to have this thing where we would, for uh, officers on the ships who wanted to become commanding officers, they used to have to come see me and they, we would give them a board. And I would always tell them <clears throat> where all the other commanding officers would ask them, bombard them with a bunch of questions of how you fight your ships and um, so on and whatnot. <clears throat> I, would, uh, I would always say, I got one question. What is, it, what is it about you and your character that may get you in trouble? What do you know about yourself? Where are you from? What do you do? And I'm not asking you to tell me that you're from Nebraska or whatever. What are you about? And I said, it doesn't start at your commissioning source. It starts well beyond that. And all that comes together at, throughout life, in your entire life. Well, welcome back to Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. This last segment is going to be focused on a tremendous young man who, while we're going to talk athletically, he would never be defined as that. Nothing but class. He is an amazing student, does great things in the, in the building, on the football field, but just in life. Paris Johnson Jr. was recognized on November 1st at Princeton High School. He was actually designated as a high school All-American and he'll play January 5th in San Antonio, Texas in the All-American Bowl. He's a number one tackle in all of high school football across the country. We're very proud of Paris for all, what he's brought to Princeton, his leadership, his integrity, his class, and who he is as a young man and how he represents himself, his family, and his school. Thank you for joining us at another episode of Viking Voices, the people of Princeton. I'm Tom Burton, proud to say so, and as always, go Vikes. <laughs>